morning. Good morning. I wanted to share with you something that uh, happened about a week or two ago that I'm a visual learner. I, when I see images, they stay with me, whether it's positive or negative. It's, it's here and it affects me and somebody waved at me like you are also that. So we have to be very careful, don't we, about what we subject ourselves to see. Well, I woke up the other morning, I peeked through the shutters because I like to count the golfers and I like to see how cold it is out there. And on the golf course was a, a, a tree branch that had fallen off in the night. We had big winds about a week or so ago. And this tree had come off, a branch had fallen and was laying there. And I, I, I stood there and looked at it for the longest time. I thought, why am I so impacted by this branch? And Doug went out and took a picture of it because I wouldn't stop talking about it. And it will be, the picture will be out on the, in the lobby, but here's what came to my mind from John 15. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown away like a branch and dries up. And I was startled because I saw myself in this branch laying there. Now, I, I'm a Christian. I gave, surrendered my life to Jesus years ago. I, my salvation is forever. But the scriptures are clear that we can quench the flow of the Spirit. We can grieve the Spirit of God so he's not flowing through us. And so as I looked at that branch, I, could, I thought, well, the leaves are still green, but they won't be green for long because it's fallen from its source of life. And with that, I found myself thinking, that's me. I was angry and I was selfish, but most of all, I was filled with self-pity. Anybody else do that? <laughs> oh my, I have more in this little body than you could imagine. I was just filled with it. And I was not looking like the savior that I love so much. There was no evidence of spiritual fruit in my life, and I knew I was headed to the wood chipper. <laughs> we don't want that. So I did not stay in that condition, and that's how I know I belong to Jesus. As soon as I recognized my situation, I just repented of all that self-pity. One of my favorite emotions, but not right, not good. And so I repented from it because it was cutting off the flow of joy and peace and everything in my life, huh? Yes. Okay. And I didn't want to be like the branch on the golf course. I was reattached to the vine by, by my repentance. I experienced again the joy and peace and purpose I was missing. And, you know, just to make sure that I got the lesson, the Lord later in that day, just a few hours later, that branch did go to the wood chipper. And it really, it just stopped me cold. And I said, oh my goodness, I am so glad that picture caused me to repent of my very, very selfish attitude. So look at, the, look at the photos on the way out. If you are a person that learns my pictures, I think you'll get it. And if you want a copy of it, I'd be happy to send it to you. All right, so I think next, is it silent prayer or is it a... It's a hymn. Okay. Let's stand together if you're able and sing Love Lifted Me. <laughs>
of silent prayer. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is too heavy for you. You can lift it for us and in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Experience. 
throughout their days and throughout their weeks. I want people to know that God loves them and that he caresses them when they open their hearts up to him, that they can experience his presence. That's what I hope for. That's my prayer for you this morning who have gathered here that you can experience God's presence intimately and personally and that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you are loved from God. Father, I speak blessings over your people this morning. And I pray, God, that they will experience your divine presence. And every cup that is empty would be full. And every cup that is full will be overflowing with thanksgiving and praise to the God that loves them without measure. We are here, Lord. We are here, God. We are waiting and anticipating for you to move by your Spirit and meet those impossible needs that cannot be met by any other person other than yourself. We hunger for your presence. Father, we pray that you will comfort those who grieve. And Lord, as you have taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh, after that, we are going to sing, Now I Belong to Jesus. Yes. All right, you can remain seated. What is that? Sit down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
bless you with these gifts. And Father, we pray that every gift may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that you have enabled us to earn a living, that we might enter the kingdom of God with thanksgiving. Bless those who are less fortunate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. and some of you don't know it but he's my greatest cheerleader amen. Amen. amen he and Carol are my greatest cheerleaders and I am so grateful for them in my life you see because we don't know how long we're going to be in each other's lives 
So we must cherish each other. We must be affectionate toward each other. The Bible says that we should love fervently, especially those who are of the household of faith. And I love this choir. I'm grateful for you and your love for God and your love for music and your love to sing and worship God with the gift that he has given you. And don't worry about it not being the way it used to be. <laughs> Just appreciate that you have the ability to express your songs of praise to God. You don't have to meet my expectations. You're worshiping him with your instrument. You're praising him with your instrument. And I appreciate every single one of you. I thank you, Ginger, for stepping up in a crucial time uh, when we needed someone to take the mantle and get us through a season of grief. A lot of people, preachers are not preaching the Word of God. Amen. They're preaching everything else but the Word of God. I want people to know where they're going when they leave here. When they leave this earth, I want them to be assured of their eternal salvation. So that there's no question if I have to do their service or if someone else has to do their service, they will know where they're going. We will know where we're going and we can rejoice together. Amen. Well, God has made us families. We've been brought into family as a result of the work of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that I am a member of the family of God. It doesn't mean that we're all perfect because we're not, we'll never be perfect as long as we live on this earth but we serve a perfect Christ who knows us who loves us and allows us to give grace to one another and I am so grateful that it is because of God's grace that I am able to pastor here in this place and be your pastor some people are embarrassed for their pastors. Some people are ashamed of their pastors. I am so grateful that you accept me in my weakness, you accept me in my imperfection, you accept me as your pastor and I'm honored to represent you in the community. Wherever I go, I'm representing you. I'm speaking for Christ on your behalf. As we prepare our hearts for this most sacred time of fellowship, God does not want a part. He doesn't want 10% of you. He wants the wholeness. He wants your whole heart, not a part of your heart, but he wants you to know him intimately. Only you can allow him into your hearts. So I pray this morning, if there is anyone in this place who really has not made a conscious decision of accepting Jesus Christ as their personal savior, I pray that you will do that before you leave here. We don't know when our number is up, but we know that God has numbered our days. Some people, this is our first communion this year. Some people are not here to participate because they've gone on to be with the Lord. We are here to participate in this communion. And I share these words with you in 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 23 through 34. I'm going to read those in your hearing, and I pray that you take them to heart. 
This is Paul's letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord that which are also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Examine yourself. Verse 27, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood and body of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason... Many are weak and sick among you, and even sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another, But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at his home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. The Corinthians had a knack, an appetite for celebrating, for feasting, and they did not recognize the sanctity of the Lord's body and blood. They would get drunk. It would turn out to be one of their old parties. So Paul is bringing them into accountability that you just can't do what you normally have done in your past. You are a Christian. You are a member of the body of Christ. And these are elements that have been set apart. And when we come together and come to this table, we must examine our hearts and our lives. You know, confession is good for the soul. When we confess, the devil can't use unconfessed sins. Did you get that? If we're hiding something, the devil can use it, but if we expose it, The devil can't use it. You take the power out of it. So it's important for us to make sure that we are relational body members, members of the body of Christ, that we exercise confession. Nancy did that so wonderfully this morning. She let you know she was having issues with her flesh. We all have issues with our flesh. But she confessed to the Lord. She confessed to you. She's free. You can't hold that against her. She has exposed what she needs you to pray for concerning her life. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ. That's the mystery of members of the body of Christ. That Our healing is involved in our confession. James says, confess your faults to one another that you may be, what, healed. Nancy, you're healed. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you know our hearts. And Lord, we confess our sins before you. We confess our sins among ourselves with each other. 
Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that as you look upon us, we will reflect you in this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask those who are going to serve to come forward, please. I want to thank you for being servants, servants of God and servants of his people. This is your family. We are coming to the table that has been prepared for us. And we bless each other. We bless each other. We want the best from each other. And as you pass this bread and as you pass this cup you're blessing people you're desiring that they be whole you're desiring that God will be first in their lives this is your task this is your simple assignment you carry the blessing with you as you serve this bread we bless your servants as they share it with the congregation in Jesus name We ask you to hold the element. We ask you to hold the bread that we can do this together. In movement of God's spirit, we want him to move on our hearts. We want him to visit us in our secret place. We expose ourselves to, to the Lord. When they opened up my chest, I was exposed to the surgeons. They saw my inward parts and they studied my inward parts so that they would know how to connect vein to vein vital parts to vital parts. God knows every one of our hearts. And sometimes there may be something preventing the flow in your heart, the flow of God in your heart. There may be something. Sometimes people have blood clots. Sometimes they have clotted arteries. And that prevents them from being and being able to utilize all of their body, all of their strength. As believers, we want you to be able to flow and allow the Spirit of God to flow in and out of you. And so we are praying that as we partake together, that whatever is blocking the Spirit of God from moving in your life in a way that is pleasing to God, that there will be a release, that there will be a release in you.
bless you. This is the body of the Lord. We bless you. This is the body of the Lord. We bless you. This is the body of the Lord. We bless you. This is the body of the Lord. We bless you. This is the body of the Lord. And Jesus sat with his disciples. And he shared the bread. And he said, this bread, this morsel of bread represents my body that was broken for you. Well, we know that his physical body was not broken, but his body was broken because of the sin. Our sin was upon his body. So we lift this bread, Father God, we pray that you would bless this morsel of bread that is symbolic of your body. We lift it to you and we ask you to bless it in Jesus' name and we take it together. Amen. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. In the Old Testament, they had the blood of bulls and all kinds of animal sacrifices because of sin offerings. We know that Jesus satisfied the sin offering for the world. Sometimes, we are so sick. We're so sick. We have lost blood. And the only thing that could help, because there's life in the blood, that we get a transfusion. I don't know how many transfusions I received, but I know that I received some blood transfusion when I was in the hospital. And so I'm praying that this blood, this cup, as symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ, would give you a transfusion in your body. That whatever is out of alignment will come into alignment. And that you will experience life and energy and strength and joy because life is in the blood.
And Jesus had the cup. And he said, this cup represents my blood that I'm shedding for you. And he told them to, he was creating a new covenant, a covenant of his blood. We are blood covenant people. Without his blood, we remain under condemnation. But because of his shed blood, his redeeming blood, we have been set free. We have been made righteous because of his death, burial, and resurrection. We are members of the body of Christ. The Bible says that we are a peculiar people, and we are. We represent a holy nation because God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, and we lift this cup that's symbolic of his blood. Father God, we pray that you would sanctify this this blood that represents you, Lord. Sanctify this juice in Jesus' name. Let us drink together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just ring that out, Catherine? If you know that song, let's just sing it together. Come on, sing it, sing it. Never lose its power. The blood. Come on, yes. Yes, 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 yes. us to be together again and father we pray that you would be with us as we gather at two o'clock to celebrate our brother Don Willie and Lord we pray that you would move among us and if there be those who have lost their way Lord may they find it we invoke your blessings on each of us and may we be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Join with the choir as they sing the benediction song.